How's it going guys? So this is going to be tutorial 2. Uh, this is where we delve a little bit deeper into the add-on and Blender itself and use some of the features from the add-on uh, and a little bit of trickery to give ourselves some additional variance to our terrain material. Um, let's have a quick look here. So again, I'm just using cycles. You'll need to have the experimental feature set set up. I'll be using GPU compute um, and I will probably, I will definitely be using a separate add-on to light my scenes with. Um, alternatively, you could use like a point light or something like that, a sun lamp. So let's just jump straight in. So we've got our basic terrain. Um, I set this up earlier, just using, again, the add-on. It's a low poly mesh. Uh, we've got 16,000 faces, which is nothing for, for a terrain. Uh, again, like in the first tutorial, which if you haven't watched, there is a link that should be popping up on screen about now. Click on that and that'll take you to the first tutorial, which will run you through the basics of that tutorial. Excuse me. Let's have a look here. So, what was I saying? Yeah, right. We've got basic mesh set up, ready for us to to do a bit of um, magic. Right, so we're going to add a uh, ground material and I want it to be we'll go with uh, the ground earth and for the rocks I want this to be let's have a look for now we'll just use dark rock um, and I'm going to set up the ground coverage to 2.5. Okay, this will do for now. Um, what we're going to do is add a object in. Just a cube. And we're just going to scale that up for now. We're going to add another material to this and you'll see why in a second. So first of all, what we want to do is just make sure that we're happy with this basic material, which I'm not, so I'm going to add in uh, the grass one instead. And then we're going to adjust this in a moment. So with this one, I want to mix maybe for the peaks of the mountains. Let's go with, ah, oh, why not? We'll try it from the, gr from the ground up. So we'll do that for the ground and for some additional stuff on the mountain we'll change the rock type to maybe something a bit more sedimentary looking let's have a look here um, go for the jagged one and add the material to that and then we'll just apply the scale to that for a moment so with this one what we've got here is terrain two terrain one we want to take Ground zero zero one. Copy that. And we're going to paste it in here. And we're just going to move it above. And we're going to spread these out because we're going to create a mask in a second. So let's check around zero zero one. Okay. So we want to change the scale on this to about ten. Okay, that'll do me. And then we also want to add in a gradient texture and we're going to parent this to an empty in a moment so we've got that uh, i would strongly suggest that we or you install the node wrangler add-on so we can do things like control and t and it'll add the texture coordinate system in and you can find that in user preferences on the node so now that we've got this one, we want to mix it with this one, and we're going to do it through this one. So first of all, select object. We're going to go uh, Shift and S to case it's selected, and we're just going to add in an empty plane axis. And we're going to rename this uh, gradient control. And on the cube, we're just going to turn this into material box. Okay, and um, we're going to move. Create a new collection 
Polar environment. We're going to move the grading control and the landscape into the environment. And we're going to leave that there. Also, we're going to click on this filter and select viewport and the render tab. So that when we click on this one, the box, it'll remove it from our viewport. And if we click the render icon, it'll remove it from our renders. So we're going to leave it in the viewport for now so that we can see it. So here, we're going to click on object while we've selected this. And we're going to turn that into uh, gradient control. We're also going to rotate this on the Y axis by 90 degrees. And then we're going to select our gradient control and just scale it up by about 10. Move it up on the Z and scale it by 10. There we go. That'll do. And we're going to click on this again and change the gradient texture from linear to an easing material. Uh, sorry, sorry, an easing gradient. Or quadratic, it depends on what you prefer uh, in the easing type. And we're going to go back down and move this down here. And all I want for now. is the texture mix to show in these pots. Click back on this material and we are going to add in Shift A, Shader, Mix Shader. We're going to pop it onto the BSDF there and we're going to put this one in the bottom. We're going to select this, you see it's mixing the two, and we're just going to create a little group by Selecting all of these, Control G, drag the color out of the group output at the end. Click on this, and we're going to put this as a gradient mix. Click back here and tab out, and we can drop this all the way down here. And we're going to rename the item. Gradient mix, control A to select. Okay, I'm not naming it road. There we go. I'm going to put that into the mix factor. Now I actually want the brown texture to be the bottom, so I'm going to swap it over. And there we go. We've got that in there now. And if we go to the full shader output, just see that we've got it mixed into the bottom. Now, for this, you can add in a converter and a color ramp. I do little color ramps. We can change that to ease, and we'll click on this. And we'll drag the black up and the white down. Be able to change the fall off between the two mixing. Now, what I also want to do is add a little bit of noise to the mix. So we're going to select up here, go back to textures, and we're going to add a Musgrave texture. We're going to change the scale, change it to 4D first, and let's have a look, what are we going to choose? We'll use the FBM. Uh, increase the detail, increase the dimension. one and change the scale again of this just like that and put it on gradient control I'm going to change this to texture 
change the scale to one. Actually, I think I'm going to use a noise texture. Let's try this again with a noise texture. Uh, if you select that, left alt, and just drag it out, it'll get rid of it. And then we just control shift left click to enter back on the noise. And we're going to put that to 1.1. 1. 1. Mm, 0.5. Okay. We're going to add another color ramp. Shift D, bring the black up, bring the white down a little bit, change that to 4D, and that'll do for now. So we're going to create another group, just B in the Node Wrangler to add the box, Control. Uh, G and what we're going to do for this one is change that output to noise mix and then we're going to add the W to the group input and this we will just name um, location oh. down here now we want to mix this and this, so we add in, or you can control and left shift and then right click from one node to the other and it'll add a mix in. And we're going to go with a, maybe a subtract, let's have a look. Yeah, we'll use subtract. We'll now drag that back in to there. And flip the two colors. Out of the multiply lock. Yeah, we'll go back to multiply. Oops, it ain't easy. And we'll just swap them over. See how this goes. Okay, so now another thing we'll want to do is change the scale. So let's try a scale of one. Let's bring the black values down. The white values up a little bit. Change the scale. Just fill it with these values until you get something that you're happy with. So we've now got that. And a neat trick that you can do is if you add a converter and a math node in, put that in there and change it to power. You can adjust after the ramp and you can put these into another group. So we're going to change these, control, just B to box it all up and then control and G. And in this group, we're going to change that, put that there, put that there. We're going to grab this one, put it in the bottom, and call this one noise power. And then we're going to grab this one, and call this one gradient power. We're just going to call that mix. It's our new group. Uh, we'll call this ground mix. 
so now we get to the power of the gradient texture. And we can see the power of the noise. And we can also change the location of the noise and the scale of the noise. So we've got these two, which we can hide. What we need to do now is obviously mix the displacement. So again, all you do is grab a color mix this time. Put that in there. Shift, control, and left click, and we can see the mix. So we grab the displacement for that one. And we know this one goes in the top, that one goes in the bottom, and then grab that mix. And there we go. Now we'll be able to see the displacement for both of them. Now, first of all, what I want to do is change the scale. 20, 20, 20, and let's add the subdivision so that we can see how the displacement is shown. So let's change the displacement from 1 to 5 and see how that affects it. Change this one. Displacement power five. Displacement power ten. Fifteen. Let's give it some things to work with. Okay. Now let's do some of the rocks. So, select the cube, come down, let's take the rock. Control C to copy, click back on here, and now we're going to work with the rocks. Start in, move them underneath. So, we want to use a gradient texture again, but this time we want to add another empty, and we'll change this one into a plan axis again, and we want to change this one to uh, radiant control, control rocks, drop that into our environment box. Let's pick that up. And let's change the viewport display. So that's on that one. Right. So, Shift A, add a texture, gradient texture. What we want to do is just turn this off in the viewport to make our viewport rendering a bit quicker. And again, we're going to change the rotation 90 degrees on this uh, object and it's gradient control rocks. So we're going to bring that down G, oh, G, Z. We're going to scale that up to like 100. And come back here and change that to quadratic. And Probably gonna bring that down to about there. I'm gonna change a few port display to ten, no one. Back to this. So now that we've got a gradient one set up, we're gonna add another texture, and this time it is going to be a wave texture. 
So we're going to check that. Again, we're just going to add the same vector in to that. Scale that to one. Um, actually, no. We're going to add a separate vector into this one because we want it to be generated along. Yeah, we'll do it along that. Leave the rotation values. Um, we want it on bands and we want it on sign. We just want to change the distortion a little bit. And the detail a little bit. And then let's the detail scale. So we get something like this. And we are just going to mix them two again. And we're going to use a multiply mix. Bring that up. Sort of over. And something like that. Okay, now let's add these two to here, put that mix into there, and see how these two look. So we are going to want to Change the scale of this. Move it down a little bit. Something a bit more like that. And we're just going to tidy up the node editor. So we're just going to click and then shift click, shift click, shift click, shift click, shift click, shift click. Control G to create a group. We're just going to Add the multiply factor in, we're going to add the scale factor in, the distortion factor in, um, and probably the detail factor in. Now we'll add them all in. And then the output will just change to a uh, rock mix. We're going to bring that up here. And it'll go in there, so let's see how this is looking at the minute. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing, but first of all, we're going to swap these two. Why oh, are we swapping them around? No, I'm being silly. We've got to take Shift A color and a mix RGB, put that into the displacement, put that displacement into that one. You're going to match the displacements to the shader. So if rocks goes into the top of the mix shader and rocks 01 goes into the bottom then the displacement should go into the bottom for rocks 01 on the color and top for rocks uh, on the color again and you just want to put the mix back into there oh, great rocks we want to change the scale on that to about 10 10 and 10 uh, and we want to change the displacement so let's put the subdivision modifier back on Displacement to like 20, see how that affects the displacement. Uh, 30. And we want to do the same for this one. So let's find out where the text is tiling. We'll change that scale to 10, 10, 10. Okay. And then we'll go up to the displacement amount and put that on 20 and see how that looks. Okay. So now that we've came up with the shader and mixed it all, you can see that it breaks up the tiling effect that you do get from textures. 
so let's open that up. Um, maybe we want to add a shoreline or something. Um, so let's have a look. Just thinking. Let's add a water plane. Add water. And we will select the drink water, put it in the environment. And we're just going to scale it up. Then, and then apply the scale, or you get that effect. And we're just going to bring it down. GZ scale it and let's bring the scale in so it's under the terrain and we'll apply the scale again. We're going to drop the division amount. And the next thing we need to do is check the depth. So we're going to have to go into the modifiers tab, go to thickness, and just put that to like 50 meters. Then bring the offset all the way down. And if you can see a bit of terrain underneath, you want to change it up 75 meters. Let's have a look. Now, the reason we're doing this is because. The water uses true volumetrics, um, or should I say proper volumetrics, to simulate the way light behaves in, in water. Uh, obviously, water being an object with thickness in real life, when light travels to a certain point, it stops working. And that's what you're trying to simulate here. So let's just change the lighting for a moment. something a little bit more bright and that'll do for now let's put a 90 degree rotation on it or a minus 90 degree rotation on it so we can work with this so we want to change the scatter color to something a little less blue and we want to bring that value down and the absorption color we can bring it down to the dark Brown, make it a little bit muddy, and we're going to change that value to 0 0.05. What this will do is it'll should be able to take the caustic strength off. This will show you the water in between. Now, oh, maybe I want to go a little bit dirty with this water, so change that value up, change that one to. The caustic strength back on. Version up a little tiny bit. Okay, so now we've got our water. What we can do now is set up the scene um, or fine tune the rest of the scene. So we've mixed our materials. So we've got some nice mixing going on. Now let's add some particles and things in. So a good way to do this is to come out of the render view, turn your overlays on, select your mesh, and we'll go into a 
weight paint mode. Now I want to put a couple of trees in, so I'm just going to paint around the edges here. As a matter of fact, a good idea would be to show you the gradient tool. So let's click on the gradient tool, drag it from the bottom. You just want like something a bit like that. And we want to turn the water off for now. Um, no, actually we'll leave it on and that can be a good map. So go to these tools, change the brush to a subtract brush and we're just going to Make sure the strength is all the way up. Go around the outside of this water. Make sure you cover the outside of the water. Do this with all of them. Anywhere where you see the water poking through, go to the top down U7 on the numpad. And then let's turn our water off in the viewport and just tidy up everything in the areas we just cut out. So just get rid of anything red, make sure it's all blue on the water. Because this is where our trees are going to be and trees wouldn't grow in the water in real life. So we just brush, 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 brush. Clean out the area. Here we go. Right, that's clean enough. So let's grab the blur tool and just blur that outline that we just created. So we get a more natural fall off. And that's good for the trees for now. So let's go back into object mode and we'll change that to trees um, let us hide our box go back to the true terrain tab and come down to particles trees let's use some uh, let's have a look we'll use some spruces add trees and they will be scaled massively because for some reason blender um, doesn't like the scaling units when you convert a model to a particle from another file. So let's bring that down to 0.1 and uh, let's bring the display to like 1% for now. And we're going to change the size of them. Um, there we go, there they are. So first things first, let's go into our particle settings, turn on advanced. Turn source, use modifier stack, random. Rotation, let's create a bit of random rotation. Change a bit of random phase. And then let's go down to render and object rotation. Make sure that's enabled. We want to change the normal to a global Z. And then we want to go into the vertex groups. Click on density, click on trees, and then click on length, click on trees. And then we're just going to bring the scale of them all down. And we're going to change the scale randomness a little bit. And let's put our display back on. Now we're going to create a texture, which will give this a bit more randomization. So click New. Bottom right, show on the Textures tab and change Image or Movie to a Cloud Texture. We're just going to change this to hard and change the size up a little bit and up the depth a bit. Leave the navel R and implement. So we're going to change it to density. 
and then hair length, but we're going to bring the hair length tab down and we're going to colors, brightness, two, contrast 1.5 and then just double check these boxes. Bring the brightness down actually to 1.25 and double check these boxes. Okay, so now that we've got these trees in, we're going to change the display to a nice 2% and change the amount to like 5,000. And then we're going to do the same thing, but with some different trees. So first of all, let's turn that off for now. Um, and let's go back to the Vertex Group. And we're going to click this button here, Vertex Group Specials. And we're just going to... Um, where is the option? Copy Vertex Group. And we're going to change this to Trees 2. Go back into Object Mode, Weight Paint. And we're just going to take the paintbrush back to the tool make sure it's set to subtract and we're just gonna like rub out loads of stuff because um, we want to add a bit more random to these trees we don't want them to grow in the same place because in nature that wouldn't happen so we're just rubbing out loads of stuff and we're just gonna come in rub out loads just create some nice shapes just rub out loads of stuff. There we go. And then with the weight option, we're just going to increase the levels 1.25, 1.15, like that. And then go back to the weights option and smooth. And we're going to change the iterations to maybe like 3, 8. Yeah, that'll do. And this can be where our new trees grow. Uh, what I want to do is rub out anything kind of goes up a mountain side. So let's just rub that out. No sheer faces because you don't get trees on sheer faces. It's fine to have a little bit of light blue spots every now and then. Just Adds a bit of randomness to it all. And then let's just take the blur tool, blur all that off that we just rub. Right, so this is going to be where our oak trees or something grow. So let's go back into the object mode, go back to true terrain, go to trees, low poly, oak. Um, first of all, we want to enable this. I'm going to click on defaults and we want to put active to defaults. And what this will do is it'll take all the information that we just took from this and it'll apply it to the next one that we add. So when we click add trees, there are our oak trees. The size is the same. The amount is the same. But what we can do now is just change the amount to say 500, increase the display. Um, and we want to come down here to the textures, which we want to change that to trees two, and trees two. And we want to go and enable object rotation. Just bring the scale of all of the trees down. Match what we just had. Um, let's click. And I just, to be honest, I might just take off the length group. Yeah. And let's bring the scale of them down a little bit more. Maybe reduce the number. Let's check them against them.
Okay. Let's put that down to 10%. So we get a smooth viewport. And we'll put the oak trees down to 5%. Get nice and snappy. Let's have a look. Now we want to work on obviously getting some rocks in and things like that. So we'll just go back to the white paint mode. Create a new vertex group. Um, we will copy this one. Copy vertex group. Change that to rocks. Go to weights. Invert. And then we're just going to rub off the stuff from the peaks. Put on the subtract brush. Yep, that's fine. Come all the way up here. Just rub off some random stuff. I keep saying rub off. That's erase. It doesn't need to be pretty. We do need to make sure that we keep it where the lakes and things are. Uh, that'll do. And then we just want to zoom all the way out. Layer it all up. And then we'll go to weights. Smooth. Contract. Minus 0.15. Let's reduce that in. And bang the iterations up to about 20. And then we're just going to take the brush, change it to add, and then just add some areas in. That's where we want some natural rock formations. And you don't even need to bother with smoothing these bits off. Because, well, you'll see why. Too big. There we go. That's all painted. So we've changed that into rocks. Let's go back into the object mode. Let's come down. Go back to true terrain. We'll go to the particles, rocks, add some rocks. Um, so what do we want to go for? Some grey rocks. Okay. And add rocks. And for some reason these do come in at the right size, which is weird. Um, come down to the particles tab. Render. Change that to rocks. And that to rocks. And then we just want to go back to the render in true terrain, change the random size, reduce the size all the way down, change the number all the way up. Like so. And then we'll come back here, duplicate this. Click the button here to make it a single display user change the number down to like say 500 but we're going to change the size all the way up on the render which we can do yeah let's just disable that ones for now where have these rocks gone The amount was set to 2%. We've got them. Let's change this scale to like 150. Let's add a little bit of change that to normal. Make them all random. Do the same for that. We'll there we go. So no, we don't have a camera in the scene. Let's get a camera in the scene. Snap it up here. Go to the camera settings. What to be set it to 10 kilometers. Come all the way out. Let's find a nice 
just want to render the ROM. Enable the water. What you need to do is click on the screen, close all of these, and then move your subdivision modifier to the bottom of this pack. Just turn it on. Turn off your overlays. Put your spruce trees on. Put your oak trees on. Render. Uh, before we do that, stop the render. Coming to our subdivisions tab, change that to 2. Change the off screen to 10. 8 maximum, don't want more than 8. Change that to the camera. And enable the denoising data. And let's see what we've got. And now you can see after mixing. Um, the age material, the material, sorry, on the trees and giving them a bit more variance, you do get a much more natural looking scene. And there we have it. So that is how to mix materials um, and how to create photoreal environments again. Um, a bit more in depth on masking the particles and affecting the particles etc um, obviously what you do know is that you don't need to unwrap any of the terrain meshes that you do import because uh, it's all done procedurally through the add-on so that's that one guys tutorial two over uh, if you've got any questions please contact me on the blender market store leave me a comment uh, if you're watching this i'd be really grateful if you should, could subscribe and that's it happy blending Thanks for supporting me.